Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 141, Walkouts and Mergers. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and somewhat vulgar at times co-host, Michelle Whalen. Nice. <laughs> I have no idea what you were referring to. Good thing the camera was off. That's all I got to say. You mean off. Off. Yeah, <laughs> off. Uh, anyway, how are you doing today, sweetheart? It's been a day. Indeed it has. It's been two days for me, actually. So. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a week, really. Yes, you know? most, most of one. Yeah. Fortunately, it's almost over. Hey, it's Friday Eve. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> That's the way we were talking about it at work. We were like, we're so close. It's we're we're right there. <laughs> it just means I got one more day. I gotta drag my butt out of bed and go to work. Yep. So anyway, but that's not what we're talking about. No, today. it's not. No, today this is actually a back to back week because we had so many things to talk about. We just didn't want to let time go. Did, didn't want to have people wait till next week for this stuff. So this week we're going to take a look at how Disney CEO, how the Disney CEO handled or rather mishandled Florida's controversial don't say gay bill. Then we'll dig into the next major consolidation move in the entertainment industry with Amazon's acquisition of MGM. And we've got a great insightful pick for you this week and some convention news, but not much convention news. But before we do that, I do want to implore, beg, plead for our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find the audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment. Video versions of this podcast and all of the network's podcasts can be found as insights into things we also list audio versions on that as well you can find those on apple Podcasts, spotify google stitcher iheart radio and pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast today i would also invite you to write in give us your feedback tell us how we're doing how we're not doing uh give us your your uh, suggestions for pop sh uh culture shows or conventions that we can plug on the show you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can find all those and much more on our official website at insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. I love that uncertainty. <laughs> Go. So it seems that Disney employees or cast members, as they are also referred to, um, were walking out across the U.S. So they're mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. At least that's the message that Walt Disney uh, Company's cast members are trying to send to their corporate overlords. Cast members of the entertainment giant are staging, were staging uh, walkouts across the country in protest of CEO Bob Chepik's response to the recent Florida legislation that's been dubbed the Don't Say Gay Bill. LGP, LGBTQIA+, that's a lot of letters. That's man. a lot of letters, so you got to say it slow. Uh, the workers and allies alike planned a general walkout in locations in Florida, California, and elsewhere. Cast members are up in arms at Chepik's tepid response to HB 1557. H right, I did say, okay. Um, it's a lot of letters. House Just wanna, Bill. 
House bill. Oh, there you go. Hey, look at that. So the bill that would prohibit instruction about sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through the third grade in Florida. Unlike his predecessor, Bob Iger, (laughs) the lesser of the two Bobs, thought he could play the politics of the state closer to the vest. Chepik sent a company-wide memo on March 7th with his thoughts. <clears throat> Excuse me. He believed the corporation could make the biggest impact by creating a more inclusive world through inspiring content through the inspiring content we produce. Basically saying it isn't important enough to get the company involved in. The company's official position on the bill was particularly galling to tens of thousands of Disney employees in the state of Florida. Chepik did issue a late and lukewarm apology, saying it is clear that this is not just an issue about a bill in Florida, but instead yet another challenge to basic human rights. You needed me to be a stronger ally in the fight for equal rights, and I let you down. I am sorry. Even his apology seemed to be a bit of a tongue-in-cheek response, as if yet another challenge to basic human rights is just a bit of an inconvenience and not something worth standing up for. While he admits, you needed me to be a stronger ally and I let you down, he doesn't really pledge to do anything to set that straight. He did announce that the company would pause all donations to elected officials in Florida, What that's supposed to accomplish is puzzling. Maybe it's just makes Disney look less guilty of supporting elected officials content on trampling human rights. Maybe it helps Bob the Lesser sleep at night. It certainly doesn't do anything for those affected by the legislation. In a unified statement, the cast member said, The recent statement and lack of action by the Walt Disney Company leadership regarding the Don't Say Gay or Trans Bill have utterly failed to match the magnitude of the threat to the LGBTQIA plus safety represented by this legislation. We have been forced into an impossible and unsustainable position. We must now take action to convince the Walt Disney Company to protect cast members and their families in the face of such open and unapologetic unapologetic bigotry. Chepik, who obviously doesn't know when to cut his losses and move on, poured more gas on the fire with a virtual town hall. The Wall Street Journal reports that Chepik told cast members that he and other top executives were determined to use this moment as a catalyst for more meaningful and lasting change. As a contender for the Too Late, Too Little, Too Late Award of 2002? 2022. Okay, I was going to say, I guess I should have, you know, caught that. Uh, So the Too Little, Too Late Award of 2022. Chepik went on to say that he and other senior leaders would go on a global listening tour of cast members. Chepik's tactless handling of the situation has caused a public relations crisis for himself and the company, which should come as no surprise given so many other Chepik error uh, decisions that have uh, been steadily alienating both cast members and customers from the house of Mickey Mouse. Of course, as seems to be often the case uh, with Chepik playing second fiddle to Bob the Greater, his predecessor, Bob Iger. See, and I knew that was coming and it still made me laugh. Iger came in a strong opposite, came in in strong opposition to the parental rights in education bill on February 24th, weeks before Chepik felt compelled to apologize for his gaffe. During his term helming the media empire, Iger was often center stage and su- uh, for such controversial supporting uh, controversies supporting the company's cast members and their families. Chepik's lack of empathy, tactlessness, his tactless delivery, and complete absence of leadership is in stark contrast to the more refined, more enlightened example that Iger offered, and it reflects on the company as a whole. So, what do cast members hope to accomplish with this walkout? 
in an emailed response to a list of questions, uh, in an emailed response to a list of questions, they indicated their main goal was to stop the corporation from donating to elected officials who sponsored weaponizing and hateful legislation. It's hard to argue with that. They also expect the company to take a stand against similar legislation in Georgia, a key production hub for the company's film and television shows. In a statement, the group said, We believe the Walt Disney Company's recent statements about their commitment to our community means that any time legislation like this comes up again, they will take a more visible stand and we will plan to hold them accountable for that. Ultimately, it comes down to politics. Republican legislators who advocate who advocated for the bill content that parents, not teachers, should be the people talking to children about sexuality and gender issues. Maybe in a perfect world, that works. Sadly, we don't live in a perfect world. Many who support this bill are grossly unqualified to speak in an educated manner about topics, if they speak to their children about such topics at all. Democrats argue that the bill uh, demonizes LGTB, <laughs> LGBTQIA plus people and effective and effective bar students from speaking freely about sexual orientation and gender identity. In essence, the bill is a violation of free speech at its core. Its use it uses public funds to push a bias, a biased conservative political agenda on students. The measure has passed both House of Legislature and now heads to the Republican governor, Ron DeSantis. DeSantis, who's made it very clear he's neither a fan nor an advocate for anyone who doesn't conform to his narrow conservative view of the world, who has already expressed support for the bill. So kudos to the to the uh, cast members at Disney for standing up for this. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and that's what's such a wonderful thing about Disney, you know, because, again, we we bash them on a lot of things and, and we praise them on, on a lot of things, too. They are very inclusive when it comes to their cast members. Sure. And they want equal rights for everybody. So they don't care what your race is, your gender, your preference your color your and i think you know i think what happened is you had bob chapik who has his personal views on this and, mm -hmm. and i don't know what his politics are i never i didn't bother to look that up right right but clearly he was of this mindset that the company shouldn't be involved in these type of political things that right. was what his knee-jerk reaction was mm -hmm. unfortunately you're knee-deep in it because you're contributing to politicians. Right. Because you're trying to get favorable legislation for your mm -hmm. company. Right. So you can't not take a stand. Right. And given the company's history with Iger, who mm -hmm. never hesitated to take a stand. Absolutely. And was always on taking the moral high ground when it mm -hmm. came to these things. You, you can't just ignore that example, stick your head in the sand and pretend that nothing's happening. Right. Your employees depend on you. Mm -hmm. And there's over 70,000 employees that work for Disney in Florida. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of votes. Right. Even if a percentage of those people don't, you know, they might be people that are just here on work visas and, right. you know, because Disney has a lot of international staff right. that work mm -hmm. there. Even if you take half of that number, that's enough to swing a vote. I, I hope it is. I, I really hope it is. And especially now that you have so many people who worked in California right. who had to transplant to Florida now. Because of I'm, the moving operations. Because of the moving operations. I'm really hoping that a lot of this backwardness mm -hmm. clears up Florida because I really don't even want to go and visit Florida. You know, I know it, not everybody f feels this way, but, you know, and and a lot of people are like, OK, well, you know, I don't want, you know, my 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 kindergartner talking about this. OK, that's not even uh, so if you have a child in kindergarten who happens to have 
two moms at home or has two dads at home, this child can't talk about their family at home because of this act. And if you have a child who simply has questions because they have Mm -hmm. a fellow student who might have two same gender parents, Mm -hmm. they can't ask questions. Right. Their parents, according to this bill, their parents are supposed to explain things to them. Right. And parents who support this bill are wholly unqualified to explain this because they're so Mm narrow-minded themselves that they don't want to even take the time to understand it. And and there was a beautiful um, – I, I, I'm totally going to botch it, but there was a, a beautiful meme about, oh, my God, I had to explain, you know, my, my gay brother to, you know, my kid, you know, and it was like – why does, you know, Uncle, you know, Bobby always hang out with Joe? Oh, because they love each other. Okay. Right. That is that is what a typical kid is going to yep. say. All you have to do is say they love each other or that's whoever's parents. Right. And kids are going to be... Okay. And that's the foundation that you need to start. Exactly. Because to a little kid, it doesn't matter. Color doesn't matter. Exactly. They do. Two people love each other. It's the most Mm -hmm. fundamental feeling that a child could understand is love. And if you start off with that, Mm -hmm. everything else is so much easier Mm -hmm. after that. And and here's the other thing, okay? So now you you can't talk about, you know, different genders or whatever or okay because again this really is two different things. Sexual identity is one, gender I- identity is another. So now, how many times you know, do you say to a little kid, "Oh, is that your little girlfriend? Is that your little boyfriend?" How many times do we sexualize toddlers? Right. Where you're basically putting on them that they're sick. Well, and that's you know? the other side of this right. is that you've got – you're basically – those people that mentally abuse those mm-hmm. who don't conform to what they think are normal. Right. You just gave them carte blanche now. Right. You, you, you're you now advocating for that. Mm-hmm. What politician wants to put his stamp of approval on that? Right. That's political suicide. Mm-hmm. Who's stupid enough to vote for that bill? Right. Yeah. Reme- remember who voted for it, Florida. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because come their re-election time, it's your choice to get rid of them at that point in time. Yeah. It. It. it and it's scary that you know. Again, if you don't feel that way, that's fine. We're not saying everybody has to be that way. Just let people love but who they want to love the f- and right. be who they want to be. The fact of the matter is, even if you're not like that, other people are. And, and you more have than likely, no right to tell them who they can and can't love. Right. And more than likely, you know somebody, if they haven't come out to you to tell you, you already know somebody. Right. And this is just another example of, of Bob Chappick just not getting it. Right. Like... If he would have come out right, you know, right away, and that's the thing is now, you know, you see Disney posting and and Disney Plus posting and Marvel right. posting and Pixar and all of, you know, the, the companies s- supporting it and, um, you know, and there's one Disney group uh, on Facebook who, you know, pointed out that one of the the accounts had posted it but taken it down because there had been a typo or something. And, of course, you know, all the trolls were, oh, see, they really didn't mean it. They were fixing a typo. Like, right, geez, right. people, you know. And granted, there are plenty of Disney fans who are happy that that Disney feels this way and hate that, you know, Disney does gay days and, and, and all of this other stuff. And, you know, and that's the thing that drives me crazy because these are the, you know, Christian fundamentalists right, right. that love everybody, but love everybody, but only if they're like me. Right. right. I, that's the only, you have to be like me and I will love you. Right. But, well, what got me was even, even in Chappick's, apology right. here. He says, you know, 
It instead, it's yet another challenge to basic human rights. Like, oh, what a pain in the ass! We have to deal with another challenge to basic human. Like, we really sh- right. dude? in twenty twenty two, we shouldn't have to be having to deal right. with right. Basic I agree that you shouldn't, but rights. it shouldn't be an inconvenience to you. Right. The problem that you have is. If you don't want to play politics, then you can't play politics, which means right. you can't go out and buy your own politicians. Right. Because if you're buying your own politicians, they damn well better vote in your favor, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're wasting your money. Right. The fact that they're coming out and saying, well, we're not going to contribute to politicians anymore. You shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. Right. right. And then come back saying you don't want to get involved in politics. Mm-hmm. You're neck deep in it, dude. You don't mm-hmm. have a choice. Right. And I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff with tax credits and all this other stuff, you know, because obviously Disney's a big supporter of, you know, the Florida economy. But the thing is, now there's also a lot of other companies out there, too. So, you know, I'm sure if Universal and, you know, all of these other companies kind of came together and put the strong arm, you know, it would make a difference, you know. So you you need Disney, but you need everybody else to kind of do it well, as well. Know, pe- corporate America needs to do the right thing. Mm-hmm, absolutely. It's, I mean, that's as simple as it is. Mm-hmm. And you can't, you can't abdicate your responsibility. When you're that involved in politics, and they don't mention in the articles that, that I researched how much Disney was giving, but you know it's not pocket change oh yeah when you're that involved in politics and you're trying to buy your own politicians you know you there's... can't pretend that you're not part of politics right you know they have their own lobbyists right. i'm sure you know Absolutely. the the full-time you know lobbyists for for everything so so disney getting it wrong again but really bob chepik <sighs> yeah just terrible like complete lack of leadership you know mm-hmm I was never a fan of Bob Iger. You know that. I think right. the man was paid more, mm-hmm. 10 times more than he should have been paid for what he was doing. Right. But he looks like a saint compared to Chappick at this point in time. Yeah. Bob the Lesser. That's how I felt. <laughs> we'll forever refer to Bob, Bob Chappick. Bob the Lesser. The Lesser of two Bobs. Uh, uh, it's yeah. good. I like that. So, all right. That was what we had on, on our Disney article. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. And we'll talk about some entertainment news. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So what does the Amazon MGM deal mean for the entertainment industry? The man with the golden wallet now owns the man with the golden gun and much more. Amazon has agreed to purchase the film and television studio MGM for nearly $8.5 billion. At first glance, that number sounds big, but mm-hmm. in reality, it's insignificant yeah. compared to so much that's going on in the, in the industry now. The merger was actually first announced uh, last May and just recently became official. It's the second largest acquisition for Amazon after Whole Foods. It's also the latest in a string of mega mergers within the entertainment industry, including AT&T's merger of Warner Media and Discovery last year. Included in the iconic merger are brand uh, included in the merger are iconic brands, including the James Bond franchise, Rocky, The Silence of the Lambs, 
and Legally Blonde, just to name a few. The merger has been cleared uh, by the European Commission. Having concluded their investigation into the merger, the European Commission determined the merger would not significantly reduce competition in the markets. The U.S. government hasn't given its blessing on the union yet, but the two companies signed the dotted line anyway to make it official nonetheless, which I thought was kind of interesting. They clearly don't think what the uh, the U.S. government <laughs> cares about this one. Uh, will we see Amazon Prime video selections uh, options start to open up? Well, it's unclear when or if Prime subscribers will get the full MGM catalog. Um, an impressive library that contains more than 4,000 films and over 17,000 TV episodes. Some industry experts think this and other mergers might signal a dark time for streaming ahead. Mergers like this mean less choice for consumers. I don't know why I went to your camera on that one there, but you had a really good reaction on your face like, when I said that. <laughs> so riveting. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> um, anytime there's less choice and therefore less competition, it means higher prices. Just what we need right about now, right? Mm -hmm. The streaming wars have sparked a new era of consolidation, which is already underway. Uh, this uh, still has a way to go before they get overly restrictive, but they're already moving in that direction. So what do I say? Blame Disney. Everybody else does. <laughs> sure. Why not? Amazon, Netflix, and just about everyone else are trying to bolster their reserves of intellectual property in order to compete with Disney with their new and highly successful streaming service, Disney+. Plus. So you can't really blame Amazon for this. Disney threw down the gauntlet in 2009 when they acquired Marvel Entertainment. Uh, the neglected property wasn't all that impressive at the time, but we see what Disney's done with it since then. Disney then raised the stakes again in 2012 when they bought Lucasfilm. Between their original work, their Pixar properties, Move Marvel, and Lucasfilm, Disney essentially locked up 90% of the target audience's childhood under one roof. Of course, uh... They spent a year squandering the opportunities they had by housing their works on other streaming networks until they launched their own streaming service in 2019. But since then, everyone has been trying to be Disney in the streaming world. So what's the end result for consumers? Static catalogs are well and good if you like rewatching TV shows and movies, but the real money is a new content, right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. It's likely that Amazon will be milking their newly acquired properties like Rocky and James Bond for sure. You may even get spinoffs based on your favorite characters. I mean, Rocky is nothing but spinoffs at this point. True. <laughs> but that also means you'll, have, you'll likely have fewer unique stories emerging from these studios. You're likely to get retreads of what you've already seen, which is pretty much what we see with Disney now. I mean, Disney, sure, they're still putting out original content. But a lot of what Disney's doing is taking some of the stuff that they have and re-releasing it. You know, we're seeing live action versions of animated versions of their movies. It's like, okay, you guys can't come up with original stories at this point in time. Well, one of the, the newer movies that just came out was Cheaper by the Dozen, which right. was a remake yeah. of, you know, a Steve Martin movie. Yeah. So I was kind of like, wait, what? Oh, we already yeah. Oh. Okay, so you're so. seeing the retreads coming out of Disney. Right, right. You're probably going to see the same thing coming out of Amazon. Now, Amazon has not hesitated to to drop money on projects that they mm -hmm. like. You know, yeah. we're very fortunate that they picked up um, The Expanse. The Expanse, right. You know, they saved a show that we absolutely loved, and they've th hemorrhaged money into it for mm -hmm. effects and Right. story and staff and everything else. Right, and you could definitely see the difference between Absolutely. from when it was on Sci-Fi yeah. and then when it came over to, to Amazon Prime. So Absolutely. So it's reasonable to think that they're going to continue that trend with their MGM properties? Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. Do you need to have, you know, a remake of Rocky? Or well, and that's a thing. You've you've got the Creed movies that are that are the true, trend now. true. You, know, you got, could you know, or maybe find you know. But they also have Lord of the Rings. True, and Lord of the, the Lord of the Rings TV series yep. is coming out. So. so they've got that. They've got 
RoboCop, which is a dead franchise. They tried to revive that with a new movie, but mm. that's certainly something that you can pick up and run with. Right, and I could see doing not maybe James Bond, but something... Jane Bond. <laughs> sure, you know, <laughs> something in that... You know, genre, you know, so I, I guess think there's... I think what would be interesting there would be to see how the female M got to her position, mm. uh, like a like a, a Cold well, War precursor of M. And that's what would be like interesting to see is, you know, OK, we always see the, the movies and everything with James Bond in the back. What's the background? What's right. how? Right. And that's you know... what Star Wars is doing. Right. That's what Disney did with True. Star Wars is they went to the fringe. Right. We're not doing the mainstream. We're bringing mainstream characters in just every for now and then, right? Like you obviously have to have somebody as James Bond, but you don't necessarily need to see him, right? You know, let's they have make all guest the... appearances periodically, right? Exactly. You know? That guy that just walked by—that was Jane. That was 007, by the way, right? You know, that's who, like who's the... 006, right? You know, <clears throat> tell tell the history of who was 001. How did you get right. one, two, three, and obviously seven? Who's eight, nine, and and ten? So, and, th and that's what we might see with some of the spinoffs that they're talking about here. But I think they're right. I, the the analysts are right. What you're going to see is a continue mar continued march towards consolidation. We saw we're seeing the same thing in video games too. Mm -hmm. you know, everything in entertainment is going towards sucking up all these separate companies, putting them under mm -hmm. these big giant umbrellas, and you're going to go back. Ironically. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, you had three networks. Right. And You're going to have, entire well, yeah, industry. because that you, you have Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. So everything under all of those umbrellas is, is now the one. Disney now ended up getting all of their things that had been on Netflix and other places. So even the Netflix original. Marvel shows like right. Daredevil and Luke well, Cage. And that was what, and, you know, what I had mentioned earlier right. was that Marvel or Disney really squandered a lot of their intellectual property early on because, because they didn't have any place right, to they didn't have it, it. Right. So they said, okay, you can do this and you can have this. And now they're like, right. we want it. And want now it it's yeah. all there. So now you actually have the parental controls on Disney Plus because when Disney Plus first started, you didn't have to worry about it. Right. Now yeah. all of those other, you know, things are but there. So. The downfall to that is the elimination of competition mm -hmm. always means higher prices because right. there's absolutely no reason mm -hmm. for these companies to compete against each right. other in a price war. And we've already seen price increases yeah. start so from it. That's, so. that's the thing that's probably the most damaging thing. Mm -hmm. Um from a creative standpoint, they're still going to be churning out content. They're mm -hmm. still going to keep the franchises alive. Right. You may even see this revive some franchises that have been neglected. You may see right. a revival of a RoboCop franchise mm -hmm. because they've got the property for it now. They've got the right. budget for it. Right. So that's one thing that, that I think the creative side is probably going to continue to go because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. But – it's going to cost more. Right. You know, if you want to see a new RoboCop movie, you're going to have to pay for it somehow. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, you know, an extra $5 for your Amazon Prime subscription now. Right, right. Whatever it is. But Amazon has never hesitated to raise their prices no. as they added more services. Right. Um, Amazon's one of those companies that at least you see a return for your investment. Mm -hmm. You know, Disney's notorious for... On a regular schedule, increasing prices right. for everything. Right. And you, year after year, don't feel you're getting a return for that investment. Whereas every time Amazon gives you something, they usually give you something after. They usually give you a raise in price after you've gotten some kind of service mm -hmm. out of them. Mm. So there's definitely an incentive to accept those prices. I think your your average user will be less Mm -hmm. Hesitant to accept those prices. Right. And again, because when when you're talking about Amazon Prime, you're not just talking the television stuff. You're, you know, you're also with the, the music and you also have the free shipping and, and advantages of, of that. So and that's all kind of bundled together. Whereas, you know, with like a Disney Plus, all it so is is just. Do you think we'll ever see a Disney MGM Studios again now? <laughs> I wonder how much I can get from my shirt online. Yeah, see? 
<laughs> Sell it on Amazon. <laughs> the other thing to note here is do they take control of the MGM Grand Casino? Really? Okay. I, well, I don't know. Oh, I don't do, know. oh do um, they? I don't know if they take control of that. Yeah, I don't know to how that... To think that Bezos would be in control of a casino is terrifying. That is kind of scary. Yeah. You yeah, get they... Amazon credits or something? Right, to, there you yeah. go. There you go. Amazon gift cards when you cash out? <laughs> they just drop out of the slot machines now. <laughs> that would be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, they didn't mention that in, in the articles that I read, but huh. it would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, I don't think the end is near. I think there's a lot more acquisitions to happen out mm-hmm. there. and uh, People have too much money to to burn, I guess. Eight, eight, eight and a half billion dollars. You know, I wish I had that much. I, there's certainly other things I'd spend it on than buying a studio, that's for sure. I have a studio. I love my studio. Do you? I do. I'm always trying to change it and evolve it, but that's okay. Right, right. Life is change, right? There you go. Anyway, <laughs> that was all for our entertainment news. We'll be back after a quick break with uh, a good pick of the insightful pick of the week. Thanks. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for your insightful pick. So we haven't been doing insightful picks for the past couple of weeks. Since we've changed format. Since we changed format. So, you know, every now and then we'll kind of sprinkle it in. Um, So this is a a very interesting show. And especially, you know, for those that have that work slash home life, it's an interesting take on it. Um, it's a uh, mystery, drama, thriller. You're not really sure what's going on, but I'm sure by the end of the show, more will be revealed. Um, and the show is called Severance, and it is on Apple TV. So uh, that's the only place as of right now that, that you can uh, find it. Um, so the premise is that Mark leads a team of office workers whose memories have been surgically divided between their work and personal lives. When a mysterious colleague appears outside of work, it begins a journey to discover the truth about their jobs. Severance takes uh, takes as its starting point a unique solution to the work-life balance crisis, one offered by a veteran U.S. corporation called Loomis or uh, Lumen Industries. What don't they make, asks one awestruck employee about this opaque organization. Lumen has perfected a process that ensures employees never bring their work home with them. A surgical procedure that is in effect turns a worker into two people, an Audi who turns up at the company daily at 9 a.m. and goes home at 5 and their any alter ego who exists only in the workplace from nine to five and has no concept of life outside of the concrete complex where they work. No awareness of wars, politics, family tension, or even social media. For starters, the procedure that plants this device in your brain, separating your workplace and home life memories, is irreversible. Then there's a work environment on the severed floor. Of course, you have to descend, you know, to to get there, which consists of kind of a a warden um, of 
a, um, a path of never ending corridors and sterile office spaces of kind of like a, what a hospital would envy. So, and as the work is performed by four members of the microdata refinement department that the story is kind of centered around, let's just say that when someone calls it a mysterious and important work, they're kind of half right. One of the show's great, you know, conceits is that no one actually understands what their work achieves. Of course, as with any workplace set show, the dynamic between the four colleagues plus their relations with their bosses is integral to the success of the show, even one as lofty as this. And this is where it really scores giving some char- giving us characters to care about and in and humanizing an inhumane concept. So it's very interesting because again, we know that we have you know, in our daily life, you know, those of us that that work, uh, we have our work persona and we have our our home persona. So this is kind of an interesting spin because you don't know the two and you almost become two different people. But what ends up happening is this one person who worked for the department found a way to to take it out, but now is going through all this um, you know, like mind meld type stuff where he doesn't know which end is up. And obviously the company knows something happened. So now they're kind of like doing a witch hunt to to find him. So what's interesting is, you know, this job that they're doing, they don't really know what they're they're doing. And and it's so funny because it's supposed to be this, you know, kind of high tech company but they're working on computers that are like, you know, 20 years old right, and, and right, doing right, all right. these things like you're like, what? And it, om- you know, so one of my theories is that what they're doing, it really has to do with the implant. And that's what the job entails is monitoring these people and making sure that you can, can you know, th- that you can control them to to do all this stuff. You know, like the one person tries to to quit. And she basically gets a message from her Audi saying, you're not quitting. We will do everything to keep you here. This is your job, you know, because as soon as you kind of go down like the elevator or you go up the elevator to leave for the day, you all of a sudden you don't even remember what your job was. Like you kind of go into a locker room, you change your watch, you change your shoes, you change your badge. And the other interesting thing, too, is anybody that works on the severed floor, nobody starts work at the same time. Everybody's shifted by, you know, 10 minutes so that you don't run into anybody, right, right, right. you know, because you don't know who this person is until you get down there. And the other thing, too, is so many people, like, when they get to work, they feel like, oh, wasn't I just here? Like, you don't feel rested because you don't realize that you left so it's very interesting when you kind of you know think about it and then now as as the season's progressing this one department who never met anybody else except for like top management now is all of a sudden running into other people and they're like we never we know who you are but we never run into you and and so there's all this interesting you know, dynamic of, you know, oh, crap, now we got to keep them separated. How do we do this? So how many episodes are there in the I th- series? I think they're going to be <clears throat> eight total. Single season? Yeah. Yeah. As of right now, I don't know if it's something where, you now, know. Is it, I'm assuming it's something that they're working to a conclusion yeah. for the season. Yeah. So and not, it's, it's like. Serial. Right. And, and the other thing, too, is there are some people that are on this floor that aren't severed that know that there's you know so like the one person who's the boss is kind of spying on the one person in both lives you know but it so that's where it kind of makes me think that you know what their job is has nothing like sounds very orwellian yes yes it does. Interesting. Yeah, so it's it it it's a little freaky, you know, especially when you first watch it. 
Um, you know, but as you get into it, it it's definitely one where I want to see how yeah. things go. Yeah. And each week it's interesting because different people post different things. They even have <laughs> a LinkedIn page now for they set up a spoof LinkedIn page oh, nice. for the company. Nice. Um, and then I think there was even a book that became available on on Apple Books. I believe it was free. That was kind of like written by somebody that worked for the company and, and got out. Right. So right, they're they're right. putting all these little oh, Easter eggy cool. things that's out cool. there. So that's kind of cool that that's they're doing cool. that. So ha- Halo did the same thing when it first came out. You had all these mysterious things on the mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, so very cool. Very cool pick. Thank you. So we'll be right back with uh, some quick afterthoughts. So I think we had one. Right, because the about. one that was supposed to be that same weekend, unfortunately, got canceled. And we shall not talk about so that. So we one. won't talk about it. So uh, the, the the biggest one that's kind of coming up in the area is Fan Expo, which is formerly known as Wizard World. That is going to be at the Philadelphia Convention Center from April 10th. Uh, sorry, 8th to the 10th. So join tens of thousands of fans who are just like you and experience the ultimate playground for comics, sci-fi, horror, anime, and gaming. Three days of citywide events, family-friendly attractions, and world-renowned celebrities await. The showtimes will be Friday from 4 to 9 p.m., Saturday 10 to 7, and Sunday 10 to 5. I believe up until today or tomorrow, you can still pre-order tickets. Um, The cheapest they come is $37 and then they'll go to 47 but that's also it depends on which day you go. Are we going to um, get our tickets? Yeah, well, well, maybe we'll do that after we're... Uh... Prince Humphrey thing's going to be there. Oh my god! That's awesome. Spike's going to be there! And who else? And and, and Beta. And... guys. Yeah, Beta yeah, and beta, and yeah. uh, Gates McFadden from Star Trek. Well, we got She's, a lot of Star Trek folks. Yeah, there. so they're probably doing John the Delancey's whole. He's going to be there. Jonathan Frakes. Yeah, so they're probably doing a whole Star Trekky. The original Ahsoka is going to be there, and not the one in the live action. Right, right. So yeah, Michael Rooker's going to be oh, there. Oh wow, Kevin Smith and Carl Weathers. Was there a new Rocky movie or something? <laughs> well, no, because he's probably there with with. Man- so they're Mandalorian. right. So they're doing yeah. the whole Mandalorian, and then of course David Tennant. Who's you that? know, who? Who's that? <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, oh boy! So, yeah, we got to get our tickets, but yeah. uh, definitely that's the that's the place to be. Yep, right, sure like. is. Uh, anything else coming up on the horizon that you're aware of? Uh, well, we had the the little toy show in that's the weekend before that. Um, that's the one that's in Delaware, the Nurse Shrine. Nurse Shrine one, yeah. Right. Oh, we got to plug that one. We love plugging that one. Yeah. We'll probably wind up going to that one too. I can't spend too much there if we're going to Fan Expo the next week. Right, right, exactly. So anyway, that was all we had today. Uh, before we go, I do want to once again uh, invite you to subscribe to the podcast. Audio versions of this podcast can be found listed as insights into entertainment, video, and audio versions of all of our podcasts can be found listed as insights into things. We're on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, and any place you can get a podcast. I would also invite you to uh, write into us, give us your feedback, give us your shows you'd like us to plug. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com backslash insights underscore things video versions of this podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintothings.com you can find us on facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast uh, high res versions of our videos can also be found of all of our past videos on youtube at youtube.com slash insights into things you can find us on instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things we do stream five days a week on twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things and for links to all of our various sites you can go to our official website www.insightsintothings.com that's it another one in the books have a good week everyone bye bye